Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the Beer and Tech Podcast. I'm here with Dad. How are you doing, Dad? That's very good, thank you. Cool. Uh, we're out here in Spain. We're on a lovely balcony. Dad's got his beer. He's got his San Miguel. I've got my copper bag. I'm a millennial, so that's what I drink. Um, we've got a few things we want to go into here. Dad and I have always had this, I don't know, connection, I guess, with with tech because dad's always really been into it and that sort of rubbed off on me and now if we now if you look just at our our desk here i've got my macbook dad's got his ipad pro i've got my iphone his phone is less good dad's even got an I've apple got a special pencil. design on my phone what are you talking about go on explain the design on your phone well, it's one of those special cracked screens that comes with age what is your phone dad it's a samsung what samsung Samsung Galaxy. And what do you think about that Samsung Galaxy phone? It's uh, done its time. Done its time, certainly. Dad has this thing where he gets phones and seems to keep them for an uh, ungodly amount of time where they, they should yeah. have gone to the grave, he should have upgraded, yeah, but no. Up now cause, cause that's because that's because James keeps them for five minutes. Yeah, I do tend to change my phones quite a lot, but since I've moved over to iPhone, that has changed a lot. But we will go into that a little bit more later. But, Dad, I wanted to sort of give an intro um, to each other. So tell me a little bit about your tech story, what sort of your first gadget was, tech thing was, and what, what got you excited about it? Well, guess what? As James says, I'm not a millennial, so I don't have any... Um of the, the newer gadgets that James would maybe think about. I started at a time when uh, Microsoft was born, when the technology was in its infancy, when MS-DOS was the greatest piece of software that was and out there. What's MS-DOS? It was the very first operating system for computers. So you kind of like Windows XP? It was actually before Windows and Windows and Windows. So it's a really... Before Windows? Yeah. So what was your first sort of computer, gadget, tech that you remember? Why did you get Why did you get excited over it? What did you like about it? So if I had to go to the very first thing that I had within Winner Gadgets was probably um, when I was um, five years old, I think. All right. And it was a game called, um, that you'll know really well, that you play on your phone now, and lots of people listening would play on their phone or their iPad or their computer, but in those days we had a little console, and it did ping pong. Oh, you know, I've got pong on my on my laptop. As I was going to say, I'm sure there's many people listening that have got <laughs> it as well, and it's amazing how those little bats went bing, bing, up and down the screen. What console was that, Dad? Oh, it, it didn't even have a name. It, it was... It was a little thing that had two um, windy wheels uh, as pads <laughs> uh, that you shared out and it plugged into the back of a TV screen through the aerial uh, cable and, and that was probably the first insight. And there was many hours spent just playing that one game. Yeah. I th when it comes to gaming for me, I remember the first console I started on was on the Xbox 360. Yeah. Um, it's pretty new then. Pretty new if you think about it. Do you know when that was released? 2000 and Six? Don't know. I might just be making that up completely, but oh no, it wasn't the 360. I remember I had the original Xbox, and we used to play Halo. We Cause did. Because remember, you had this is the one where you used to shoot me be from behind. Yeah. So a lot of guys would have played games with their dad, and their dad would have been better than them, and showing them up a little bit because they they've grown up with these games. Not dad, no. Dad could not I, I remember we used to do the racing games a lot I was very good at moving the paddles just or on turning yeah, the yeah, but the but the car never turned the same way I turned <laughs> especially with Project Gotham Racing do you remember Project Gotham Racing is that the one you lapped me on I've lapped you regularly <laughs> and we also played Forza a lot because you uh, when I got my Xbox 360 you got your one and we were going to sort of play over Xbox Live a little we, bit. We did try a little bit, didn't we? It didn't work. It didn't work. One, because you weren't very good. And two, you didn't want to play with me because you kept losing. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to sort of think of what got me interested in tech and what my sort of first gadgets were. But it seemed that a lot of the gadgets I had were sort of hand-me-downs from you, weren't they? 
Most of them were. So you, a lot of laptops. I used to get parts from from you, the Windows XP specials, um, phones. Have I got any phones from you? HTC. I did have the HTC one. So what was the model? It wasn't of that? the HTC one. It was just the HTC. What was the model of the HTC? It was a. Was it a Windows phone? It was a Windows phone. Even they don't exist anymore. No, so that's another thing that intrigues me about your tech story is Dad started off with Windows phones. What was that side flip one that you had with the full square keyboard? That was the XDA Mini S or something. So I, I remember you had this phone which had a stylus and it was revolutionary. It had a keyboard in it. It flipped had for, a, for flip a keyboard. Out. It was full Windows on it and windows lost the plot and lost what what made you want to get that phone that was before the iphone was even thought about yeah but what that that, that was it was, that a was gadget. revolutionary yeah, it was a time. good gadget it, it was touch screen i think palm palms were out there they were like um pdas pdas was the in thing this was the, the first real one that had turned into a into a computer so where I had the original science yeah. if you remember those the series 5 was a great one I'm sure there's a picture James can find of that a somewhere the, a sign. the Scion what's the Scion P-S-I-O-N was a great little company um, did lots of innovative gadgets and keyboards um, that was one of the first sort of handheld computers that you could take around um, and as I say then we moved into some some Nokia phones Nokia phones were you think about battery life now we have a laugh uh, James what's the battery life on your phone now what are we looking at 53 uh, 55% oh, oh I'm so in the lead we, we, we were out earlier today and dad and I have this thing of checking our different battery lives I have the iPhone 8 plus and dad has a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge Edge S7 yep. Edge sorry um, and when I was up I had 76% battery and dad had 82 yeah, something like that. Something like that, and um, we're we're now almost tied, and Dad's almost overtaken me for his phone going dead. But that you were talking about Scion. I was talking about Scion. Scion was a great um, company. Um, Who were the PDAs made by? So I remember you had a lot of the PDAs. Well, the PDAs were made by a company called Scion. Oh, okay. Um, they, what they did they do? They l- literally did the things that you do now on your computer: Word, Excel. What the PDAs? Um, the PDAs. Um, did all of that um, but you obviously had to connect to um, if you I don't even know if they were internet enabled I'm, in fact I don't think they were I think they were just handheld devices um, and then you brought out ones that had modems in oh, wow. them do, do you know what a modem is James? I right so from my recollection for the modems we had to plug into the PC the tower PCs there's something that sort of enabled you to connect to the internet so you plug that your your ethernet cable into the modem and the modem into your computer to get access to the internet is that right yeah and it, it, this was before ethernet cables as well so you used to like put a telephone cable and it used to translate um, it used to tra- translate what the computer was saying into um, the modulated to the telephone network um, telephone now, network I forget about that yeah as well. it, was, it was in the telephone network and what was oh, I can't even remember what we were getting because we're now talking about gigabits of uh, data going over but it was really slow and anyone will remember I'm sure James again will find the tune where it goes <laughs> and sometimes it just went dead in the connection you had no idea what had happened but you had to start again logging onto your internet server um, the internet provider server. It took a long time. Interesting. Right. So we sort of talked about our first sort of gadgets, what we went through, what we got involved in tech. So let's take a leap into the present. Uh, a couple of years ago, Dad decided that's not the present, is it? That's a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> let's t- <laughs> need a beer after that. <laughs> yeah. Have you finished your beer already? Uh, yeah, I'll have to top up. Excuse me, everyone. That is a really poor beer pour It's a poor there. pour, but it'll taste just as good. <laughs> What's so yeah, the question? W- we're going back to the present two years ago when Dad... I'd started getting sort of my Apple devices. I remember the first one I bought 
was a 2009 MacBook. Oh no, I had an iPad before I that, think, didn't uh, I? Yeah, I think we might be going back because I think my last iPad lasted probably five or six years. Blimey. So I had that and it, it did good service over that time really loved it <laughs> then it, it started getting a bit slow so it just sort of became a, mm. a spotify link um, a, sp- a glorified spotify player that's yeah. what your ipad was that's that's what it turned into um and in the meantime in terms of i was still working on pcs yeah and i had a had a very good pc the, the you got the medium one didn't you are we talking about that? No, we're, we're talking um, after that now. We're talking the laptop. Oh, okay. Oh, got oh, yeah, the yeah. touchscreen laptop. Yeah. Um, so, to put it into context, Daz has been a Windows user sort of all of his life. I've been a Windows user as well. I built my PC. I love my PC. But since I've got all my Apple stuff, it's sort of taken a v- very much of a backseat. But if we go back quite a few years, I remember the first Apple product I bought was my iPod Touch iPod Touch, 16 gig. I absolutely love that thing. Um, Wi-Fi enabled? Wi-Fi enabled. I had games on it. Um, I could put all my music on it. I remember going to school and playing Doodle Jump. And it was revolutionary. This thing cost me about 150 quid. Sam, my sister, had one as well. We loved our iPod Touches. But at this point, the iPhone 3G had just been released, and it was sort of unattainable for me. And, Dad, what was your thoughts? Why, why didn't you jump over to to iPhones at that point? Well, I didn't even jump over to iPods at that point. I had, I had, a, I had a creative Zen music player. So um, you didn't even have any of the... None of the Apple... Um, stuff at all, so I, it was all Windows based, everything that I'd ever done um, until what was it about a year ago? I, I, w- I would say about two years ago when Dad walked into the Apple store um, sin- since moving to Bromley, where there's an Apple store near and far too near, far too near, just up the road, and decided that he. Decided that he wanted to go full Apple. So here we are, two years down the line. Dad's decided he wanted to go full Apple after seeing me with my MacBook, seeing we, me with my iPhone. Getting a bit frustrated with my phone, wasn't I? That that, that was yeah. the thing. And then the, my, my laptop was getting slower. So, so my first um, foray was really into... I got the iPad Pro, didn't I? Which was probably about a year or so ago. A year or so. The less... Let's switch it back to when I had my MacBook, my very first MacBook, and... But the one I bought off you. The one you bought off me. But not for me. Not for you. I, I bought an old 2009 MacBook Pro that I then upgraded with a SSD and put it up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it ran quicker than Dad's laptop at the time. And it was so good. That Probably Dad still does run quicker than my laptop. <laughs> yeah, your little laptop is not quick. So, upon buying this, the, the Dad bought the the laptop off me for our, my little sister, little yeah, little one, and now she has that laptop. And that's at the point where Dad decided he can't go on with this Windows machine. Now, I'm interested that your first purchase was your iPad Pro because Dad's got 10.5 inch. What's that? What size? 256 gig. 256 gig iPad Pro. And when Dad was about to buy this, I was like, No, no, no! Don't do that. You've got to get you've got to get the the MacBook because I've got a MacBook. You won't be able to do all your work on it. It will be silly. It won't be able to replace your your MacBook now. Uh, sorry, your your laptop, your Windows laptop. Now tell me about your experience with the iPad Pro. Well, it's it has really replaced the majority of stuff I do on the laptop. Um, it's light. Um, I got one with the keyboard. There's a story about the keyboard that James may want to yeah. uh, me De- to tell at some into point. What happened with the keyboard? What happened to the keyboard? So uh, I went into the Apple Store, the one in Bromley. Um, just bought this keyboard, um, unwrapped it, started using it. Was coming back on a train. I do lots of figure work. Um, kept on pressing uh, the sign and realised it was the dollar sign, not the pound sign. Um, when you work in the UK, you can't have everything in the dollar sign. No. Um, so I thought, well, that's no good. I better go and take it back because I did do a bit of research online and realised there was two versions of the keyboard. Um, 
went into the store oh, they're great in the store they just went oops we'll, we shouldn't have any of those on the shelves let's take those off yeah and here's the one you really need um and I, I've used it in terms of traveling, doing um, emails. I can link into my email uh, work server really quickly. Um, I love the ability to do dual, dual screens on it, which is, is a big plus. iPads didn't have that dual before screens. iOS 11. You mean multitasking? Well, multitasking. Yeah. Sorry, dual screens in Windows, multitasking iOS. I still get some of the terminology um, right. Yeah. And learning to do what, um, the different flicks that I can do with my fingers. Um, that's what I'm learning all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you've transitioned to this, and I'm still not convinced that this can replace a laptop. Uh, I, I love, I think Apple are absolutely nailing the, the tablet game. I think it's the best tablet you can get. A really cool, fun device. You can do emails, you can do listen to music. It's good for media consumption. But can this actually replace a laptop? I, I, I'm honestly baffled if, if you think it can. I think it could do 90% okay. of what you do. I think there's a 10% uh, that it can't. Certainly I know when, when I'm home, and we'll talk about the, the MacBook Pro, I'm sure, as well. Um, I plug that into multiple screens. And I enjoy working on multiple screens. Although you can do dual screens on this, it's not really set up. Um, for that, it's great for, for doing presentations and linking into a screen. Um, from there but but pure sort of m working on multiple screens like the 27 inch that we've got at home it just doesn't work in that same way yeah well what, what's the other 10% then is it the fact you can't really sit down and <laughs> well you can't um, it, it's, it's interesting because on a laptop you can actually work on your lap yeah. with it um, you can't really do that with an iPad it sort of falls around a little bit and falls down and mm. flips over. And as I said, I'd had a Surface um, Pro as well. S similar thing. It's not really laptop worthy to sort of working on your well, lap. I, I, I think the Surface line are doing, or the, the, the Surface books are doing the best job of um, tablet, hybrids, laptop. I, th I genuinely think they're doing the better job. Do you think Apple are doing a did, w would you rather the Surface or the iPad Pro do you think Apple are doing a better job of creating this hybrid hybrid device well I think I can answer that because I gave the Surface Pro back didn't I yeah <laughs> so I think the iPad Pro um, won over that it's it's much lighter um, it's convenient you can take it out I still use lots of Windows software products and I've got to say I've done a great job in making them available for the iPad um, and the updates working on uh, OneDrive everyone's mm -hmm. ev everything syncing in that works really well um, I think the the proof will be in the pudding a bit when, when I move over to an iPhone and then yeah. to see how the whole um, ecosystem ecosystem works in one so I've got this as another point we're going to discuss in a little bit but okay. it's why why I am such an Apple fanboy and why I love it so much and one of the points is the, the ecosystem and having all the devices and how they work so well together but something I want to point out about the iPad Pro is how how awesome some of the applications are for it you've got some incredible developers that I'm not actually too sure you've really delved into some of the wicked apps that iOS developers make specifically for um, for iPad. Some what of the ones paid do you think I'm missing? Procreate. I definitely haven't got that. Or have I? Uh, Maybe I have got it. Pro Procreate is a paid app and it is very good for um, guys that do drawing and sketches and um, you've got paper haven't you? Yeah. Well, I've just downloaded Sketches is another app um, to, to do some drawing on so while I've been away I've been doing some scribbling um, so I wouldn't say how many um, Picasso well actually yeah, they probably look as yeah, good as Picasso's well. drawings <laughs> Picasso when he was on his deathbed maybe <laughs> not quite <laughs> oh we got some overhead noise going here wait for that to pass
It's my plane coming to pick me up. <laughs> your, your helicopter, yeah, your private one. So, honestly, tell me your thoughts on the Apple Pencil. You bought that straight away with the iPad, didn't you? Yeah, it was one of those things that I thought if you're going to get it, because I did use the pen again on the Surface Pro. Um, love it for just sort of scribbling down some, some notes. Tell you where it's coming most useful is for signing documentation, actually. <laughs> I think that's where tablets fly. They're yeah. wicked. You, yeah, you it's want really good. People sending me stuff, me s- signing it and sending it back to them, so I'm not printing it out and then signing it and rescanning it. Um, things like that take a lot of time. Just to sign it, it's done and dusted. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you're, you're a big fan. Do you think it's worth it? To so say I picked up an iPad Pro tomorrow, would you say, James, get the pencil with it as well? Yes, because I think you'll find little ways that you can start using it. Um, if you can start um, writing notes, if you, if you do, I know you like doing mind maps and things. It's probably quite good to do that to get your different yeah. ideas going. I, I, I certainly like writing ideas down, and actually, if I've got to do list, I like putting it down on pen and paper. But you know, I'm not sure the Apple Pencil would. I just maybe, I'm maybe, not sure maybe it's the same. it needs improving. Maybe there's there's ways that yeah. it can can be improved. Um, certainly the the charging point. Um, <laughs> it does look a bit silly when you're sticking it. It looks have like a big antennas. Have you seen the Apple Mouse? How you charge that? The Magic Mouse. No, you charge, charge it from it. underneath, so you can't use it while you're. Well, that doesn't work either. Oh, does another it? horrific design <laughs> thing from Apple. So, right, guys, we're going to go to a quick break here, <laughs> and we'll um we'll, we'll speak to you after then. Hi, we're back. We're back. We went and got some refreshments. Guess I what? Some beer. Some beer. I got some fruity cider, of course. Some crisps. Some crisps that we won't crunch. And a packet of sweeties. I like sweeties. Right. I think we just finished discussing the Apple Pencil, maybe? Yeah, I think you decided you wanted to get one when you go and get the iPad Pro. Oh, no, no. I remember. We were starting talking about my MacBook. Talk about your MacBook. So I have got the MacBook Pro 15-inch with touch bar. I absolutely love it. Uh, It's the one with the four USB-C ports, and I couldn't live without this machine. I 100% would not be able to take the iPad Pro to be able to do what I currently do on my MacBook. But that is more specifically because of the nature of the work I do. Which is? Because I do the content creation, the video editing, the design work, I need my Premiere Pro. I need my Photoshop. I need my Adobe Audition. But at the same time, do you not feel you're more productive when you're sitting there, you've got a physical keyboard, and you can type things. If you're doing emails, you can physically sit there, get into a work zone. You're sitting at a laptop, you're doing work. Does the iPad Pro have the same effect? Yes. Really? Yes. But you've got to remember, you're talking about sitting in pretty much the same desk all the time when you go to work, whereas I don't sit in the same desk hardly ever. But I t- I, I've taken this on holiday with me. I can do work there. I can work from home with it. My work goes where I go. I'm not too sure you'd be able to take all your work with you with that. All my work's on it. Yeah. Because it's all in the cloud. So I can go and get it if I need it. You can't put video editing into the cloud. Well, I don't do video editing. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, oh, I shouldn't have had that sweetie. <laughs> Just try talking while you're it's, eating. It's put me off the game. <laughs> now, I suppose it's a good time to mention why... What was well, Dad's most recent Apple purchase? So go on, Dad. Tell, tell us a little bit about your most well, recent... Well, before James got his one, I did decide that my laptop this windows laptop we were talking about touch screen was just getting slower and slower so i made the plunge and i got a macbook pro 13 inch so i have the 15 inch one dan has the 13 inch one touch bar and non-touch bar non-touch bar and what do you think about it love it it's uh, really fast love the way it, it's always on um Again, had to get used to some of the the gestures, how you um, uh, do the simple things like um, cutting or copying and pasting um, has been a, a learning curve. I guess it's the switch over to learning using command as opposed to control. Well, not just command, using how you um, how you use the um, the trackpad. Yeah. As well, because that has different uh, nuances to it, different. Uh, so. 
I personally think there is no trackpad on the market that is better than Apple's trackpad. Actually, I got, I got to agree with you because I moved over from some of the Windows ones, and I still get a chance to go to use some of my Windows colleagues' uh, laptops, and I find it quite frustrating because I'm just sort of touching and tapping, and they need to um, press the right, right and left clicks yeah um yeah. sometimes when i try and close stuff down just doing all the finger movements obviously i've got to remember i'm using a windows laptop with them rather it's than inferior, the Mac. really you know what i'm saying where, where you're having the um uh, the mot- multiple desktops open uh, again i find that really handy again when you're doing work stuff and personal stuff um and the ipad's just really um so not the iPad. The MacBook Pros really work well with with that. What would you say your favourite feature of your new MacBook is? It's speed, actually. Oh yeah, that's not yeah. a feature. That just should be a standard across all devices. Well, it, well, it should be. But um, I did a test just before we came out here because I needed something off of the old laptop. Um, so I opened the MacBook Pro. I opened the laptop. Actually, I'm probably still waiting for the. Windows laptop to open, but it's, it's in England and I'm not. Is it that bad? It was that bad. Blimey. You love the speed of it, which is something. What about a Mac specific feature? It shouldn't really be the speed. A Mac specific feature? It's really weird because I still use lots of Microsoft apps because I use Windows, I use OneDrive. Um, you use Citrix then for a lot of your work, don't you? I use Citrix for work. So a virtual um, Windows desktop on your... Yep, yeah, and that works absolutely brilliantly. Um, no issues. It's, it's, I, I think the, it's the gestures. It's the gestures. And actually, there's been a lot of things about the keyboard. I love the keyboard. I, I find it really light to use, really easy to use. Actually, the same with the iPad. Pro, the, the keyboard that's attached that is very good um, but I know there's lots to be said about the, the MacBook um, the key will be too shallow for some people but once again I've gone back to some of the Windows um, laptops oh my I god they're so mushy. inferior it's, it's mushy no, it doesn't just, feel just, they just don't work as good in, in my view mm. I've heard a lot of people have problems with the new MacBook keyboard because of keys getting stuck and it being too shallow but I absolutely love the new keyboard I think it feels premium, it feels nice, it feels tactile, all the things I want in a keyboard. And if I could get a keyboard like this on a, like an external one, so when I hook it up to my monitors, I would. That, that's another note. My actual Apple keyboard, my Apple Magic keyboard, is my favorite external keyboard. Um, I wish it had backlighting. That's the only thing I, I'd wish it had. But aside from that, I absolutely love using it. It feels good, tactile, well-built, all of those all of those things. So, so going back to this, the comparison between the 15-inch MacBook Pro and the 13-inch, mm-hmm. um, pretty much standard interiors or different mean? interiors. How, how do they compare interior? Well, the the two there's two main differences. So you obviously you've got okay three main differences. The the internal. So I've got a quad core. You've got a um, dual core processor but I'm not too sure that would really affect day to day tasks too much it's you've got a graphics card in yours as well uh, I've you? got a 2 gig graphics cards in it but the it, it, it works well for me when I'm doing my my graphic intensive tasks where mm. for you you don't really do that but <laughs> no, from, from what I'm doing I, I, I find it really good and actually I'm, I'm looking at yours and I think there's there's another feature that I see yeah I'd be interested to, to know you've got the touch bar version I haven't what, what's your view on that touch bar so I really, really like the touch bar. I understand it's a bit of a gimmicky feature, but I, ha- I, I find it very useful when I'm using my Adobe apps, when I'm doing emailing, when I'm taking screenshots. It's just little things. I didn't use my function keys too much. I'm not a dev guy. I don't really mm. use them too much. But touch bar brings extra functionality to apps that I wouldn't usually have. So, for instance. In Outlook, I like switching between my calendar and my mail yeah. quite quickly. There's a button for it. Okay. Just, just quickly on the touch bar, you can customize what's on there. If I want to do the volume on it, I just have a, a slider to change it. Easy, easy as that. If you want to take a screenshot, I've got a custom button there. Where I tap that, I can choose where the screenshot goes. And I really, really like that. I 
So, so I, I think there's lots of things that, that you like for it. I mean, I, I didn't go for it because I thought it was a bit gimmicky. Um, it wasn't something I needed. I, I needed, I think, more battery life, and I think it can drain the battery a little bit. But I wonder if we put that out there. We, we're starting this um, podcast, aren't we? First time around. I wonder what those out there listening to it would say. Should we have a vote and see whether they like the touch bar, don't yeah. like the touch bar? Touch bar gimmick or no gimmick? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, in, interesting to know your thoughts because do, do you still think it's a gimmick after I've just explained why I like it or do you still think that there's no real need for it? I don't think there's a real need for it. Um, I think as more and more developers start using it, it as you've described for Outlook, then people will, will it, probably warm to it. It wasn't a deal breaker for me because it, it just came with the fact that it was a 15 inch one. You can't yeah. get a 15 inch one without it. And so I, I didn't really mind if I got it or not. But having used it, I do really like it and I find it useful for my day to day tasks. And Touch ID, really handy. I think the Touch ID is uh, probably something that's really good, but then we'll get on to um, your iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 10. Yeah, um, we'll get on to that in a little Touch ID in a minute. Well, one, one other question Go on. for you, James. I know you like asking me questions, but I've got one for you. you got four USB-C ports on Just here. How often do you use all four? I, I was hoping you would say that because I would say every day I use all four every single day and your one only has two and i honestly hold on you failed today failed today because i'm out and about but when i have my laptop docked which i do often because it's my main machine for working i have every single port used up so i have i don't use a usb charge pass through i just charge it straight into the port um i then have one dongle we'll get on to dongle life in a second dongle life yeah but i usually have either one or two dongles i then have one cable that goes straight to my screen and i usually have my um usb uh hard drive plugged in because i'm usually working off the hard drive and i prefer it being plugged straight in so yes i could use a dongle and have all of those coming through one but i like the fact i've got the versatility versatility i've got four ports in which i can use it for so, so as a power user you'd say yes you, you do use it and mm. and i'd say i i use the two on mine one because i have two screens plugged in so that's what i use it for you mainly. use one for the other screen i use one for the screen you don't use your dongle for i use one for one screen and one for the other screen ah two screens okay two screens um and then i have the power going through um, through the dongle so I think I could maybe do with three mm -hmm. before maybe that's one too I many I think you're just bitter I am I, yeah, am. I've I, got I, four. I, I feel like I've, I'm two down and I only want to be one down <laughs> <laughs> so that, that does lead us so we've both adopted dongle life we've gone straight in there I've got two USB-C dongles love them actually like the fact that USB-C is is the future the fact i can get any other cable that will go straight into usb and it will usb c and it will usually perform better my dongles they do everything i need to do it just means i have to carry them around yeah you, you have to have a dongle i think you have to have a dongle bag somewhere within your bag don't you well because i'm such a tech nerd i do carry cables around with me most of the time um when I'm out and about, uh, I have this little case where I do carry my cables. So dongle life isn't much of a problem for me. Um, I have started getting more cables. I'll just buy them USB-C. So my iPhone cable is now a USB-C one. My hard drive cable is now a USB-C one. So I don't actually have to use a dongle. So what's your view on dongle life, Dad? Um, well, they work, don't they? That's the, that's the good thing. Although there's lots of different varieties out there, so you'd have to do your studying and yeah. look at reviews um, and talk to other people who use uh, various dongles to get the best the best value for money and the one that works well for what you want to do. Um, I agree with you, James. I've, I've got a bag of dongles with me also. Just because I'm sad, I also have a HDMI cable that I carry around all the time. And funny enough, when you do lots of presentations, it's amazing how many times that's needed yeah. um, to, to come out. Well, um, don't, don't like, like if you've worked in a business environment, dongle knife's not so alien. No, but there's always one person who has all the dongles. So yeah. I think it's probably you or me. Yeah, we have the dongles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, dongle life for me, I, I, I don't mind it. I've also got an iPhone 8, so no headphone jack. Uh, we'll get on to... Headphone jack? What's that? 
Oh, what's a headphone jack? Who needs it? Um, so I do have to carry around my uh, Lightning to 3.5 dongle. That that one is one I'm not too sure the world is ready for just yet. We'll, we'll get on to Bluetooth these, headphones. these Bluetooth headphones in a second. But for me, I sometimes wish there was a headphone jack in there. It's not just... I, I record audio onto my phone as well. And I have to get a dongle to plug that in. There's all sorts of reasons that the I wish the old 3.5 jack was still there. Thoughts? Well, I've, I've got them on the iPad Pro and the Samsung um, phone here. Do I use them? Nope, not at all. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, well, I, I want to talk about Apple products we still need to buy. Oh, and is there some? Is there some you need still to buy? I, I do still need to buy. Now, it we sort of are going in this direction at the moment, talking about headphones and dongles. But the Apple AirPods, I, I would... I love the idea of them. I love the idea you've got these two little things just putting your ears wireless I've got one problem wind they don't fit in my ears they we honestly they don't fit in my ears I've tried well I've never you tried to change your ears need new ears but the actual the wired ones you get with the phone they don't fit in my ears properly so I'd love to have a pair of AirPods, but I'm just worried they're not gonna fit me uh huh so I didn't go to Apple on the wireless buds. No. What? Um, I went to Jabra. Jabra, tell me more, Dad. Well, Jabra's a brand you know I've used um, many times with different uh, headsets. Um, do lo- use lots of Bluetooth headsets because I spend quite a bit of time on the phone. But Jabra Elite 65Ts, I think they are. That's sad, I know that really, isn't it? How much were they, Dad? They were £179. So, same sort of ballpark as the About the same price. Um, but for me, they do fit in your ears. There's different sizes you can have in your ears. I think they fit very comfortably um, in your ears. They don't have noise cancelling, but I don't think they need noise cancelling. Neither do the AirPods. Um, for me, I can use them for making phone conversations as well. Do you not think the AirPods would be that little bit more seamless? No. No? How no, do they connect to your iPad? They connect via Bluetooth. I open them up and they've connected to it. Okay. So I think that's exactly the same way that the AirPods do. I do love that Apple brought them out because I think lots of manufacturers have then followed. I've decided what I'm going to do. When we get back, I'm going to buy a pair of AirPods because Apple do the 14-day return guarantee thing. I'm going to buy them and I'm going to compare your Jabra ones to the AirPods. Do you reckon you still have two of them after 14 days? <laughs> Do you have two of your Jabber ones? I do. Well, there you go. I'll still have them. <laughs> That's what's worth in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, w- I won't cycle to work with them in. Why don't you have them for a week? And, you and, have them. and I'll use my Jabbers for a week. Then we'll swap them over for a week. No. And we can do a test. Still. All right. Done. Here we go. That got a test. 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 That is a test. The reason to tune in to the Beer and Tech podcast next week um, will be... Two weeks time. Two, two weeks time. Two weeks time. Two weeks time to see how the the AirPods compare to the Jabra 65T Elite. That yeah, was that that's right? the one. Yeah. Or is it Elite 65T? 65T Elite, I think. Oh, I've got it right. I've got it right. So you really like them. How did you find out about them, Dad? Oh, probably reading a tech magazine. I only read a few of them. What's your favourite tech magazines? Well, I do like T3. I do like stuff. Um, I think they're probably the ones that um, I read the most of. But as James will know, I've been getting into lots of different Apple tech magazines as well. Yeah, he's slowly converting. So yeah, there is one more Apple tech purchase that Dad needs to make to complete the set. Oh, actually, Ooh. well, there's, there's there's a few more, but one. There's one big one, is there? One big one. And it is a big one. It is a big one. Take a sip of beer it's before you say it. It's very small, but it costs a lot. Yeah. About the same as the uh, iPad Pro. Yeah. <laughs> but it's about a third of the size. But still, I'd say probably the most useful gadget we own. We, we are talking about the iPhone 10, of course. Now, Dad, uh, you, you've made the switch over to your iPad. You've got the MacBook. But you've not made the switch to the iPhone yet. No. Why not? What's happened? Well, I suppose it's, it's a mixture of price. It's not cheap. 
um, moving over to the iPhone 10. But most people and also, yeah, but also I'm waiting for September. September time, I'm hearing rumours that there may be a new iPhone, newer than the 10. What do you reckon? Have you ever checked Mac rumours? Well, I have. So it is saying iPhone X neutral, iPhone 10, sorry iPhone 8 caution so why is it being neutral about it that's because they don't know if something else is going to be announced Ooh. so there's nothing here that's saying that it might come out with a, a 10 plus I think the 10 will be a one of a kind what once every 10 years no like a, a, a two year phone as opposed to a one year phone so I don't they're, they're gonna it's gonna be hard to innovate on it because this is their big innovation yeah I uh, I, t- I think it has lots of things on the, the phone I've currently got. As much as I've been slayed in the Samsung Galaxy, it does have lots of things similar to it. as has an LED screen. Does yours? No. Ooh. The biggest thing for me was Touch ID. I absolutely adore Touch ID. I don't know why Apple didn't, for the iPhone 10 put the Touch ID on the back like all other phones. I don't know if they're just being awkward. But for me... I love Touch ID. It is my favourite feature. When I'm sitting back here, I don't want to have to look over my phone. I can unlock it like that. I love that. When I want to go and pay for something, I don't have to look at my phone. I've spoken to people. If they've got their sunglasses on, Apple Pay doesn't work. So we need to get one to try, though, don't we? Well, yeah. Well, tell tell me why you want to get the iPhone 10 over the iPhone 8 Plus. The same way I always want to get stuff because it's newer technology. It's newer by like a month. Yeah, but, but it's newer in what it's got. It's got the Face ID, um, which I think is very innovative. And it's I think less most of cool. I think it, things will move that way um, in general. But it's a less practical device at this moment in time. So why would you want to get that over something that is? Well, I've, I've never used your your Apple Pay. Your Apple Pay. I've never used Apple Pay because I've been on the, the Samsung phone. So I've used Google Pay. But you like uh, how and easy. actually, Google Pay is even better than that because you don't even have to do either of those. You just tap it and it works. But you like how easy it is. I do like how easy I it is. I reckon you'll find it difficult having to look at the phone. Well, let's try it. Oh, uh, yeah. I think you're set on getting the iPhone 10. I think so. Why haven't you got it yet on a contract like all other phones? Because this time I didn't want to go on a could be landed with a contract for two years. I'm either going to buy it outright, or I may go and do it for the Apple route, get the insurance on it at the same time. Yeah, interesting. Apple Care is very good. Apple support is wonderful. I haven't even used Apple support yet. Oh, just keep calling to have a chat. Find something. <laughs> okay, there's my challenge. I've just got to call app, Apple to have a chat. Sound lonely. <laughs> I'll record it for the podcast. Oh, uh, right, cool. Um, there's one more Apple product we haven't mentioned that is sort of a. Well, there's a few more Apple ones, but one other key one that both of us may or may not get. You cool. know what I'm talking about? No. The Apple Watch. Oh, the Apple Watch. How did you forget about that? I just forgot about it. So the Apple Watch is something that I've been quite interested for a little. You're worried about that, aren't you? Dad, for all the audio listeners, has just moved my can of cider, the empty can, so it didn't blow away. Blow away. So the Apple Watch is something I've been interested in a little while, but for the price of it, I don't really see how it's good value. Everyone I know who's got one, though, absolutely loves it. They love its functionality. Um, they love, have I been sitting? Have I been standing? How many steps I've done? But Just is those it, basic things. Is it a glorified notification device? Well, again, we need to get it and try it, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that one's a little bit more expensive to do the, the test for 14 days to see if we like oh, I'm it. I'm not sharing it for 14 days. <laughs> I don't mind sharing the headphones. I'm not sharing the watch. <laughs> Hold on, they're my headphones though, aren't they? Well, but I'm showing my headphones. We can't show each other's watches. <laughs> well, maybe we need to get two then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what are we getting? So, the... I, d- I just don't know. Cellular? No, the cellular doesn't do it for me. You've got to be on EE. We're not on EE. We're not on EE, so we can't get cellular. Why is that? Cause what, why is only one supplier in this country got it? Money. And they Money. paid for it. I reckon so. I don't think they did, actually. No? I hear that it's because of the technology. They're the only ones who had the technology to link the phone SIM card to the cellular SIM card. Interesting. 
So I think they're the only ones in at this moment in time who are able to do so. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to try it, but I, just, I think it's quite expensive. It, it, it's a good companion device for your iPhone. It's useless for you right now. You've actually had a smartwatch before, though, haven't you? I have. What smartwatch? Many, have you many had? years ago. I think my smartwatch, the Samsung, I think it was Sam, Samsung Galaxy Gear. Well, I've been the Gear, Gear Two. Yeah. I have probably had that for five or six years, so a long, long time before any of the others came out. Um, I loved it. I loved the ability to answer phone calls on it, to do text messaging on it. Over time, it sort of died away a little bit from doing those things. Why? Um, Surely that's the one reason you wouldn't want a, a smartwatch, like the fact it died away, like the novelty wore off. Yeah, I, I think it just it just got old. I think the design of it looked old as much as yeah. um, anything else. And I think for those of us who are into getting technology early doors, you want to have what looks new rather than what looks old. Yeah. And it's quite easy for technology to look old-fashioned very quickly. Very much so. Um, and then that that look as well as the use of it sort of dies away as I said the old iPad that I had um, was a similar thing it became a glorified thing a glorified Spotify um, radio player yeah. rather than what I've got now it becomes all encompassing so I think as you get the okay, newer yeah. thing it becomes more all encompassing there's more apps that are written for it more developers use it it links in um, in more ways and certainly one of the things that I think I would use the Apple Watch for Apple Pay, for example, um, for travelling around London. Um, just being able to tap your watch seems I've got to say, I absolutely love Apple Pay. Everywhere I go, I, I, I love the fact that I can go out. If you're in the US watching this, you don't have this as much, but we have tap and go contactless on almost every shop, every food place we go. So it's very easy to just go out and be able to use our phones on on contactless and Apple Pay is brilliant you don't have to go out with your wallet you can go out with your phone and just pay for stuff and I, I think that is really cool Lo love that feature uh, a little detour love Monzo Monzo just released on Apple Pay thank you so much if you don't know what Monzo is make sure you send me a message and I'll tell you a little bit more well, about it well actually as, as we're uh, looking over this balcony in um, Spain on a glorious sunny evening um, one of the things we've both been using a lot while we're out here is Monzo via our tap and go haven't we it's wicked um, been really good for that so uh, hey and the exchange rate hasn't, hasn't been too bad at all props to Monzo right so we're going to wrap this up with a few more sort of topics um, we wanted to sort of talk a little bit about how shopping is changing but I think we'll leave that to another episode because that is a whole other thing it is we, yep. we can talk about but dad what is your most underrated bit of tech that you own something that you wouldn't sort of it's not too expensive you wouldn't um underrated tech not too expensive that's the way i was actually sort of questioning it because probably my um underrated in fact i don't know if it's underrated but it's, it's not that cheap either but, um my Bose headphones have been brilliant. That's not underrated. No, it's over. It's not. They're brilliant. They're really good. Um, from the the day one with the noise cancelling, I think that's another thing. I got the thing the day they came out. Mm -hmm. um, seen them, read about them. Um, I think they transform the the headphone market. Actually, yeah. they raised the game completely. Yeah, the the Bose QC35s are unbelievable headphones. When Dad got his, it didn't take me too long to get a pair of my own. They are brilliant. Um, we're going to do another episode at some point explaining our favourite pieces of tech and why we like them. And those Bose QC35s are very much going to be at the top of that list. Um, so... Your underrated bit of tech, you say, the Bose QC35. Is there anything else that you... Well, I think there's some other things that we could, could talk about. I'd like to talk about um, things like Amazon Alexa. Yeah, definitely. In the future, because we've got Google Home, we've got Siri, I know we've got Cortana um, as well. And there's some interesting things that I know Microsoft are trying to do with Cortana moving forward. Um, so I'd like to talk about all of that. 
um, and the way we purchase stuff moving forward we're hearing lots of the high seat struggling um, and I think one of the reasons is the way we, we're shopping now mm-hmm. um, but also it is quite convenient the way we're shopping and there's obviously a service being offered to us all definitely I'd probably say my most underrated bit of tech kit is my external hard drive now that is not a very sexy bit of kit uh, the the external hard drive but for that I've got a two terabyte Seagate one that I spent about ninety quid on. It is brilliant. I, I take it everywhere. I keep all my footage on it. Um, there, there's just when, when you're doing a lot of video work, you can't really use the cloud to upload and access all your footage. When you've got it on a fast drive, it is it, it is really good. And I take it everywhere. I really, I really, really like it. And it's not too expensive. Actually, as you're saying that, James, I think there is one bit of technology that we probably forget about go on 4g on our phones the ability no. to access that you don't think that's technology of my 4g is rubbish well my 4g is brilliant here it's it Spain, quite it's great. quickly for that but i think about the uh, non-roaming charges now yeah. the ability to use yeah. your phones um for us i think it's uh, if you if you travel around certainly around europe you don't have to get different SIM cards. You don't have to dif- get different bolt-ons and add-ons. This way, we can just use our phones. I think that's so. It's something that's happened, and it's really good. Yeah. Okay. I'd have to agree. Um, okay. One tech. One piece of tech that you would keep if you had to get rid of everything else, and oh. that, that is excluding your phones, because uh. obviously the phone would be the one thing that everyone. So the phone would be the one to keep. So yeah. if I was to get rid of everything else. What would I keep? It's thrown you off, hasn't it? Oh, it has thrown me off. That's a really... um For me, it would 100% be my MacBook. I I could not live without my my MacBook. It is everything. I spend most of my time on it. I couldn't... Yeah. I was going to say my iPad Pro. But? But I think I'm going to have to say the MacBook because I think that extra 10%... Yeah, that I need just makes the the difference for me. So I think you're right. Um, you have your 15 inch Pro, and I'll have my 13 inch Pro. And contrary we'll to our, our body to shapes. Contrary to what we were saying, yeah. No, to our body shapes. What do you mean? We're both slim line human <laughs> beings. <laughs> well, this isn't big, bulky, and. And okay, it's quite streamlined. Definitely not country then. No, I think absolutely right. I think yeah. I think we'll we'll uh, the summary of the thing. MacBook Pros, certainly for us, is the way to go. Yeah, 100%. One last thing. Wouldn't be a beer and tech podcast if we didn't talk about beer. What do you want to know? What's your favourite tipple? Well, the favourite tipple this week has been San Miguel. Why San Miguel? Because I'm in Spain. And why San Miguel in Spain and something else when you're in the UK? You drink something else in the UK, don't you? I do, but a lot of times it's still San Miguel now. Why? Just like the taste of it. Fair enough. Have you always been a San Miguel guy? No. No? No. You're not going to disclose what you were previously? That's for the next podcast you have to tune in. Okay, fair enough. And my tipple, of course, is Fruity Cider. (laughs) Copperberg. What do you say? Rabina. Rabina. Yeah. So my my favourite drink is dark fruits, of course, because I'm a millennial. But Copperberg Fruity Cider I like as well. I think this is more dangerous than yours as well. No, it's not. What's yours? 5.4. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> you got to go one you. better than me, haven't you? Top trumps. <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> okay, we're right. done. Brilliant. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in to the Beer and Tech podcast with myself, James, and Dad. What's your also name? Also known as Scott. Also known as Scott. If you did like this, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, leave a comment on the video. Uh, we want to hear from you. A few questions in there. Um, if you do, any, do have anything you want to add, make sure you let us know, and we'll see you in the next one. Are we done? We're done. Cool.